Hello everybody, um, this is Brother Kevin and I'm coming to you at Wellsprings Ministry uh, Ustream. Um, these videos are done live for the purpose of giving an assist to those of you who have entered into the um, journey with us on the Restoration Prayer Vigil where we pray for our loved ones, for our family, for our government, uh, the Lord's Prayer as our template. Now, those of you who received my video um, the other night know that we're going to be praying, praying for our government this week. But before I do, I want to say thank you to those of you who pray for me. You know, not everybody likes what I do and not everybody thinks that what I do is for them. You know, it takes all kinds to reach people. And God has certain ministries for certain people because only that ministry can reach that person. And I want you to know I would do what I'm doing right now for one. And that's really how my life has been. And I haven't come to talk about me, but I just want to let you know that God more than likely has tailored this for you. You have been on God's heart and God's mind. And he wants you to receive a word today. We're going to be praying for our president as we did last night, but the other video was not live. I really want to start by praying for our president because he is the head, he has the uh, highest position in our, in our country, and we need to pray for his staff, not because he's a Democrat, not because he's a liberal, not because he's a Republican, not because he's a conservative, not because he's an independent, not because of anything except for that he is our leader. According to 1 Timothy 2nd chapter, verse 1 and 2, it says, first of all, prayers, or supplications, prayers, inter intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. Now, if I just said that, that already includes um, Mr. Obama. But I'm going to be a little more specific when the scripture says, for kings or for all those that are in authority. So now you get a chance to pray for him twice because he falls under the all men category. But then he falls under the leaders category. So my goodness, we might have to pray for President Obama double time. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, the same thing applies for President Obama applies for any leader. I don't care if it's an ungodly leader. If he's a leader, he needs God. And if he's a leader that doesn't know the Lord, you could, if nothing else, you pray that God will reveal the Son of God to him. This is very important that we keep things practical. Do you think the worst individual on the planet, and that is not Barack Obama, I'm sorry, it's not. But, okay, the worst person in this planet, in your estimation, Jesus died for him. Now, whether or not you like what I'm getting ready to say, I think the Lord is becoming grieved at many of us because we say we're Christians but we don't do what Christians ought to do. President Obama needs your prayers and our Congress needs your prayers. The Republican Party, the Democratic Party and independents need your prayers. Anybody in leadership, our Congress needs your prayers. Our Senate, our House of Representatives, our judicial, our judges. They need prayers. Our city, our local governments. And I want you to take how I pray for President Obama, and I will be praying not only for him this week, but I'll be praying for our Congress. I'll be praying for our judges using the same Lord's template that we've been using. Anyway, this will be uploaded to uh, my YouTube site later on so that you can keep up uh, with us. Uh, this is day. <clears throat> this is day number nine. So we've already gone into our second week, second day of the second week, uh, starting yesterday. And as I said before, we're going to be praying for a government, first of all, President Obama. So let's get right into it. Lord God, we lift up President Obama before you today. Lord, receive glory and honor from this man. Lord, there are a lot of things surrounding this man, Lord, that many people don't like, and many things surrounding this man that people adore. But Lord, None of that means anything if his life doesn't praise you. 
So I ask, Lord God, that you would use President Obama to bring praise to you. Lord, will you use his administration for the intention that you designed? Because that will praise you. If President Obama accomplishes the things you want him to accomplish, whether or not, Lord Jesus, others feel differently, Father, let President Obama be blessed and let him, Lord God, give honor and glory to you. Father, I am asking that his presidency glorify you. I am asking that his life glorify you. I'm singing a new song of praise, Lord God, because of the privilege of being able to uplift my president in the highest office of the land before you. Lord, I praise you for Barack Hussein Obama. And I ask your blessings upon his wife, Michelle. And I ask that their marriage be a type of marriage that will praise you. And I ask that you would visit them because when you visit people, they praise you more. When you get inside of people, Lord, they praise you more. And when people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, they praise you all the more. Lord, I worship you. I praise you. Let President Obama praise you, Lord God. Let his whole cabinet praise you. Let everything he does fall out to the furtherance of the gospel. And that which is righteousness according to what God thinks and believes and not what men think. Lord Jesus, will you be worshipped? Will you be adored? Be lifted up over this man, Lord God, over our president. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, I just want to pray, Lord God, that you would give him supernatural knowledge to do his job. Fulfill, Lord God, everything that needs to be fulfilled in the kingdom that is to be accomplished, Lord God, through the remaining days of his presidency. We know that these are the last days, Lord. So we're praying, Lord God, that you would use Barack Obama, Lord God, with the intentions you designed. And I'm praying, Lord God, that the mind of your kingdom would take him over. That the mind of your kingdom would take him over. And that, Lord Jesus, his thoughts... And that, Lord Jesus, his goings and his comings and the people and the important people that he has to meet. Father, I'm praying that your plan will be worked out. That your kingdom will be, Lord God, executed in his life. I pray that he would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. And not, Lord God, this Christianization that the world calls Christianity, Lord God. I pray that he be born again of the Spirit, that his soul would be saved, that Jesus would come and reside on the inside of him, for that is kingdom business. And I pray, Lord God, throughout his entire administration and throughout his cabinet, Lord God, you would work righteousness by giving these men and women divine revelation of how to run their government, even if they don't know how to. Lord, you teach them how. Now, Lord God, I ask that you would provide for Barack because our poor government, Lord God, is so divided. I speak peace, Lord Jesus, because peace is what's needed, Lord God, in this administration and in the Democratic Party and the Republican Party and the Independents as well and the Libertarian, whatever. Lord God, I'm just asking that you would give Lord Mr. Obama peace. Give him wisdom. While he may not be hurting financially, Lord, our nation is hurting financially. Give him the wisdom, Lord God, to be able to help this nation prosper. If so be, Lord God, that you want this nation to prosper. The only thing that I understand prosperity to be, Lord God, is righteousness. Because righteousness exalts a city. And so, Lord God, I pray that you would exalt righteousness in his ministration. By divine revelation, provide for him things he wouldn't even ask for today. Provide for him, Lord Jesus, wisdom and leadership, Lord God. He doesn't know how to handle ISIS. Well, nobody else does because only evil spirits, Lord Jesus, Lord God, only evil spirits give them their power to do what they do. And so, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would give President Obama, provide for him knowledge and wisdom from on high to be able to make the right decisions concerning, Lord God, this, this wicked gathering, Lord, this spirit that's using men to do evil. And Lord God, I pray that you would forgive Barack his sins. Lord God, have mercy on him. I, I can't imagine, Lord God, the temptations he's facing. But I ask you, Lord Jesus, to have mercy on him and forgive him of his sins. Some things he knows about. Some things he doesn't know. But I'm asking you, Lord God, that you'd have mercy on him and forgive his iniquity. Forgive things, Lord Jesus, that men have said to him, particularly those, Lord, of the opposite party, 
that have said about him, that have wounded him. Go, God, I pray that you would heal my president. And Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that these wounders, Lord Jesus, and the president will somehow supernaturally come together, Lord, and make things right. Not necessarily change their views, but just care, Lord God, about not bringing, Lord God, our president down. But rather, Lord, uplifting him and supporting him. Yeah, where well, you disagree, you got to stand. But Lord, I'm praying for something supernatural. Peace, Lord Jesus. Peace. Lord, forgive him of the hurts done to him. Forgive the hurts he's done to others. And Lord, please give him the ability to release those who have given him the most trouble in his administration. Lord God, cause Barack Obama, Lord God, to even forgive Republican people that have been, Lord God, most devastating to him. And Lord God, cause those people that have posed him that are conservative or Republican, Lord God, to begin to pray for him. And they begin to say, look, he's in the office right now. We need to care for him. He is a fellow American. Oh, God, you know, I'm speaking peace, Lord, and I'm praying, Lord God, that supernaturally, you know, Lord Jesus, the, the men are not the most powerful. Lord God, you are the most powerful. And I'm speaking peace because the Prince of Peace is here, Lord God, to forgive President Obama and to assist President Obama and to lead him and guide him. Lord, keep him from the temptations Lord, that he's facing. Protect him and Michelle, Lord. Protect their marriage. Lord, protect them from the pressures, Lord God, attached to their position. Keep the devil off of him, Lord Jesus. Keep the devil away from him. I plead the blood of Jesus over his life. I plead the blood of Jesus over his mind. I ask that you have mercy, Lord God, on their marriage and on their children. And I speak the blessings of God over his life, Lord God. I commit Mr. Obama to your care, Lord God. And ask that he would give you praise and glory, that your praise and glory would be spoken over his life. Remember him, Lord God, and remember our nation as I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, that didn't take too long, and as you can see, it you don't have to worry about how you feel. You submit. When you pray the Lord's Prayer over somebody, you're submitting to it. You might start praying and feel like, hey, I need to add a little bit of this. And sometimes it'll happen. But really, be optimistic when you're praying the Lord's Prayer. Because if you're praying the kingdom over a person, and you're praying the kingdom of God in general, you don't know what God could be using to work out salvation or deliverance, Lord God, or protection for our nation. You don't know. We don't know what goes behind the scenes in the realm of the Spirit. That's why we need to pray for our president. He needs us this hour. Pray for him. Don't curse him. Please. If you must know, I'm a conservative. I don't consider myself a Republican, but I am a conservative. He's still my president. I want to pray for him. I'm going to pray that God bless him. I'm going to pray that Jesus be magnified in his life. I owe him that as a Christian. To bless him and to pray that God would give him wisdom to be. Well, someone said, well, he ain't getting wisdom from God, obviously. Well, no help to you if you're not praying for him. And you're not speaking God's plan over his life. Hallelujah. So anyway, I don't want to get into a political thing, but I'm just letting you know that when 1 Timothy, 2nd chapter, verses 1, 2, and 3 says, First of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. That certainly includes Mr. Obama. So, let's go ahead and do the will of God. Let's not worry about politics or debate it. Just do what the Bible says and then expect results. If you submit yourself to the scriptures, even where I, you, I know in your heart, you straighten this man out. No, straighten yourself out by submitting to the word of God. Anyway, this is Brother Kevin saying, Jesus loves you and I love you. And you can um, be able to view this, uh, this uh, particular video on uh, Reformation and Revival now which is growing, and I tell you, um, my church has been going all over the world. We're in 66 nations and counting. Well, the Lord is getting this word out because it's the last days. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm not nothing. But God is getting ready. Jesus is getting ready to come back again, and these are end-time events. And so God is calling us in all sorts of things that we thought we'd never do. 
because he cares. He loves us so deeply, and he wants to get that gospel out to every nation. Let's work together in this billion soul revival harvest, and let's pray for our government. All this week, we're going to be praying for our government. Well, God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow as we are getting, we'll be getting into day number 10. All right, God bless.